as soon as there you go. That's what I was waiting for. Hi, everyone. Um, as a result of the ongoing public health emergency related to COVID-19, Executive Order 202.1, as extended, authorizes public boards to meet remotely and take action without permitting in-person access to meetings. The public must have the ability to view or listen to the proceedings and an audio and video recording of today's meeting will be accessible from DASNY's website within two business days. The transcript will be posted thereafter. And for additional information on this, please refer to the DASNY website. And I will now read the role of who is in attendance today. We have our finance committee chair, John Gardner. Um, other board members in attendance are our board chair, Al Carney, uh, Joan Sullivan, Janice McKinney, Jerry Romsky, and Tracy Raleigh. We also have with us for staff members, our president, uh, Ruben McDaniel, Vice President Paul Koopman, um, Nadine Fontaine, CFO Kim Ellis, um, Diane Folletti, Deb Fasser, Karen Ellinger, Dina Amodio, Portia Lee, Steve Winters Bona, Lee Zhu, Ricardo Salomon, Michael Johnson, Stanley Reed, um, Kathy Ebert, and I believe that is all that we have right now. And we will admit the uh, KPMG auditors. And at that point, I will turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Diane, can you bring them in? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is Carney. Uh, for the record, um, we do not have um, John Johnson, uh, committee members John Johnson um, and Beryl Snyder with us today. In order to ensure a quorum, I've asked the Finance Committee Chair, uh, Gerard Romsky, uh, to sit in the meeting and to vote uh, as a voting member of the meeting. I have, I have uh, uh, appointed him temporarily as a member of your committee so, so that we will have a quorum and can conduct business today. Thank you. Pleasure um, is mine. <clears throat> uh, I want to begin uh, by... Uh, um, uh, especially welcoming Nadine Fontaine to her uh, first audit committee meeting. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you uh, and hopefully we'll meet in person someday. Um, in July. Someday in, in July. July, sir. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Same here. Thank you so much. Um, uh, behind tab one, uh, we should have the uh, transcript of the last audit committee meeting. Um, does anyone have any comments or changes to the transcript? Um, and if not, uh, could I have a motion to approve the transcript? I'd like to make, the make a motion. Thank you, Joan. I'll second it. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, is, uh, I'm going to ask if anyone uh, 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 opposes. Uh, hearing none, uh, uh, the motion passes. Um, and now I will uh, turn this over to uh, Kim uh, for some uh, review of the basic financial statements. Kim? Thank you. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everyone. Before we move into the details, I'll give a quick summary of the highlights of this year's audit results. KPMG expects to issue three unmodified opinions on DASNY's financials, the supplementary information included with the financials, and DASNY's compliance with the state controller's investment guidelines and DASNY's investment policy and guidelines. KPMG did not identify any significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in our internal controls. Therefore, they won't be issuing a management letter. Unless there's questions, I'll now turn the discussion over to KPMG to review their required communications. Thank you, Kim. Good morning. Committee. Thank you for having us here today. Can you hear me okay, Kim? Yes. Yes. Um, does everyone have the slides in front of them for today's agenda? And I think Jeff, is coach who's with me today, is going to start sharing his screen. So moving right along, we did just wanted to highlight um, that we did have a smooth audit. One of the things that KPMG, we believe, is a great partner for the dormitory authority is we have a lot of the same initiatives. One of those initiatives are our diversity and inclusion. We just had wanted to start off with noting that mirror of our core values together with, with DASNY's really makes for a great audit. 
process as we're working with management, the committee and the board in that open dialogue as we're all going through these common goals. Moving right along to the next mm -hmm. slide, as Kim had noted, we are going to be providing a clean opinion over the, the dormitory authorities, March 31st, 2021 financial statements. We will also, or we did not identify any corrected or uncorrected misstatements throughout the year, but Jeff Coach, who's with me today, will be going through in a little bit more detailed our required communications. In addition to our clean opinion on the basic financial statements, we also will be providing a unmodified or clean opinion on the dormitory authority's compliance with section 201.3. Um, of the terms and conditions uh, are the official compilation codes and regulations of the state of New York. In addition, we will also be providing a report on the supplementary schedules of the dormitory authority, which is also a clean opinion in relation to the basic financials. Moving to the next slide. Thank you, Jeff. We did want to provide uh, this slide, which is our overall final engagement team, as you may recall, in our audit plan, we had planned to use subcontracting firms. We did utilize two um, sub MWBE firms during this audit this year, Long Island Financial Ma Management, as well as Ballas. The Ballas is a new firm that we included this year for our MBE requirements. We worked closely with them as a part of our team, and Jeff and myself reviewed all of their work under this direct assistance. In addition, well, who's not <laughs> noted on the slide is internal audit. We did utilize them for direct assistance. And again, it was a very smooth process incorporating them within our audit team. So we thank them for all their assistance as we went through the audit. And moving, and that is the final conclusion before I turn it over to Jeff. I do wanna just note um, for the record that we do appreciate working with management throughout this process. It's never easy to be audited by external auditors. And we greatly appreciate all the open dialogue and timely feedback and information that they provided to us for us to conduct this audit in such a timely manner. So with that, Jeff, I'll turn it over to you to go through some of the required communications. Thanks, Marie. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, right. Jeff, thank you. Uh, so in here is our normal uh, required communications that uh, in accordance with the auditing standards, we are required to communicate. Um, they are consistent with what you would have seen in the past. Um, we're happy to note that as of today, there are no outstanding matters related to the audit. So we do have all the information we need and we'll be able to issue our opinion on time as expected. During the current fiscal year, while there are some large transactions, none of them were deemed to be significant, unusual transactions that didn't follow normal authoritative guidance or DASN policies. Um, as well as during the audit, there were no uncorrected misstatements identified, nor corrected misstatements. Um, there's no matters to report related to any financial presentations or disclosures that DASNY admitted. Basically, the financial statements have the, the majority of the important disclosures that are required in accordance with those audit standards. There are no new uh, non-GAAP policy or significant matters to report related to those. Um, in our auditor's report, we'll talk about this a little bit later on too, but there is a modification to it, and that's a typical modification whereby there is an other matters paragraph, and that's just required in accordance with government auditing standards, whereby you, you're, you're disclosing some information related to the supplementary information, specifically here, the required supplementary information. Um, back in, in the fall, we did present an audit plan. We're happy to report that we made no modifications to that plan, so that, that strategy is what we followed, and we didn't have to uh, veer any course as a result of any transactions or, or um, uh, difficulties encountered. There were none of those, so that was a great um, circumstance. Related to the significant accounting policies and practices, the, those are noted within your note to your basic financial statements, um, and they have been prepared in conformity with US GAAP, as well as this, those established by the Government Audit Accounting Standards Board. You will note in there in note 2A that DASI did adopt a new standard this year, that's GASB 88, certain disclosures related to debt, including direct borrowing and direct placements. That did have some substantial changes to that debt note, um, whereby some of the information is now bifurcated. Well, you'll see the, the state debt and, and certain provisions of those debts, um, such as subjective accelerator clauses or other termination policies or, or, and such. Um, we do review that as part of the audit, and we found that the disclosures presented by DASNY were fairly representative of all your bond offerings as required. Um, and lastly, during uh, the 2021 audit, there were no significant transactions recorded that we are aware of that lacked any authoritative guidance or consensus. 
There are a couple accounting estimates as with all sets of financial statements made. Uh, those include the actuarial assumptions utilized in calculating your total OPEB, as well as the valuation of investments. We'll talk a little bit more in detail about those on the next couple slides here. Uh, but we evaluated those, those estimates and ultimately concluded that they were reasonable when considering them in the financial statements taken as a whole. Moving on to the next slide, um, related to here, there's, there's no other matters really to report. The related parties, there's no significant matters to report. Subsequent events, uh, last year we did have a couple of matters. This year there's, there's nothing to report. Um, it, it's the typical activity for DASNY. There were no actual or suspected fraud involving management employees with significant roles in internal control or other fraud uh, results in a material misstatement in your financial statements. And no other matters related to any non-compliance with laws or regulations, significant difficulties encountered in the audit or other, other matters that we've come across. We do wanna reiterate here that we do hereby confirm as of today and throughout the audit that we are independent audit accountants in accordance uh, with respect to DASNY under all relevant professional standards and regulatory standards. And we have performed all of our required inquiries. There is a slide attached in here um, that kind of outlined what those were. Um, we met with management, went through those inquiries as well as the audit chair and the board chair and, and we're happy to report there were no matters that came to our attention as a result of those. Moving on to the next slide, this is the first accounting estimate we're gonna talk about quickly is the total OPEB liability. So DASNY in accordance with GASB 75 is required to record the OPEB costs and liabilities based on the actual evaluation. For your uh, March 31, 2021 financials, it utilizes a March 31, 2020 valuation date with a measurement date as of that. Um, there are some key assumptions such as discount rates, expected healthcare trends, projected salary information as well as the census data that management utilizes in projecting that liability. Um, we do evaluate those. We involve an actuarial specialist. Um, based on our review, we didn't note any indicators unusual or inappropriate management bias related to those assumptions. And that overall, the qualitative factors as well as the quantitative factors were reasonable and consistent with GASB 75. The second one we had was related to the fair value of investments. And here we note this is because with, with fair value, that is an estimate. Um, you are relying on a pricing source, specifically for DASNY, the pricing source that comes from SunGuard, IDC, or ICE. Um, we do take your portfolio of those investments and for 100% of them do perform procedures whereby we independently verify that, comparing the price that is used from the SunGuard system to other sources that are not the IDC or ICE uh, uh, system. Um, based on that, there were no, again, uh, indicators of inappropriate management bias, as well as ultimately concluded that the represented fair value was consistent and appropriate and, and in accordance with GASB 72. The next slide is just that other information slide where we talk about the required supplementary information. We do perform limited procedures over that information, ensuring that the, the methods were appropriate and how they were presented and that in accordance with the financial statements in relation to the basic financial statements, there were no discrepancies. Based on that, there were no material inconsistencies identified. And last here is just a slide that we did present back in the fall, which is our approach to the fraud risk. Um, here, we just want you to know that, you know, we do take audit quality as a high priority, as we, we've talked about before. We do identify management override of controls as a significant risk on every audit engagement we do. Management is in a unique position to perpetrate any sort of fraud. So we do test certain controls to understand how management mitigates that potential risk, as well as perform some evaluations over the journal entries that management records during the years. As we did those procedures during this current year, we're happy to report no matters were identified that would cause us to believe there was any sort of management override of those controls. So that's the last slide we have here again, as I mentioned, is just that inquiry slide. Uh, these were the, the inquiries we would have performed with management. And again, no matters came to our attention based on those. We've completed these and we are ready to issue our opinion related to financials. With that, I'll turn it back to Marie. Oh, you're on mute, Marie. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> on the next slide, we have included our audit quality and transparency. KPMG has put out this report in December of 2020. To summarize our audit quality and transparency internal controls that we have in place to be communicated to you. As this report came out after our planned audit, um, our planned audit presentation, we wanted to include it here. We can absolutely provide it to you or you can find it available right there with the link uh, included on this. And moving to the next slide, I did just want to, for forward looking, um, 
note that everything in the in the topic right now in the industries around accounting isn't necessarily related to accounting. It's related to ESG, our environmental, social, and governance criteria. I know ESG has been a forefront of DASNY's initiatives as you've been thinking through your diversity inclusion metrics, and you have key metrics that you help that you hold you guys to yourselves to as a very high standard. But some things to consider here that we're seeing in the industries is also thinking what other ESG topics could you be doing? Could you be measuring and could be you be reporting those? Should you consider reporting them or publishing them to the public? Um, what processes or internal controls exist over the data being collected and reported? And are you get, um, getting assurance on your, these ESG metrics that you are, are, are applying and holding yourself accountable to? And then who in, 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 of those in charge of governments should be responsible for this value creating and adding ESGs. Maybe you've completed a couple of ESGs initiatives and you want to start a new one. Who is ultimately responsible for those? One of the reasons we wanted to highlight it is because it is on the rise of agendas for you know, the SEC, for the reporting standards, there's social pressures related to it, and even access to capital. We recognize that it's your industry that you're in. And so would you be making these considerations of ESG as you're considering who to loan debt to and to take that out? So again, it's very in the early stages of this current um, president's agenda in, in the marketplace that we're in, but just wanted to highlight it as a looking forward type agendas that we're seeing in the marketplace as a little bit of value add to take a moment of our time here today. That is our presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, John, I'm sorry, it's Al Carney. May I uh, a, a question or two? Absolutely. Um, Maria, I'm not terribly familiar with ESG. Uh, is there someone other than um, Kimberly in the DASNY organization uh, who has uh, stuck his or her head up out of the foxhole to uh, to deal with ESG going forward? Are you dealing with somebody at DASNY other than Kimberly? Actually, no, Al. I, um, we haven't had a lot of discussions with management around it. It is an evolving process. Um, I do plan in the coming year, as we're already retained as your auditors for next year, to welcome the topic who would like to discuss it. Well, Marie, maybe um, just so that I, I can better understand uh, sort of the direction of ESG, uh, as KPMG produces material to describe it and, and to look forward to do some forward thinking about what might be in ESG. Would you be kind enough to send to Kimberly uh, whatever information, whatever materials you all produce uh, with regard to ESG? And then I'll ask Kim uh, to forward that information, of course, uh, to other senior managers at DASI. But also I'd, I'd like to see wh what it is and where it's going. And Kim, if you, once you all have gotten it, uh, I don't want for KPMG to send this to me directly or to the board directly, but I would like for KPMG to make sure you have it as they produce it such that we can then see what management's looking at because it's governance driven. And that's, mm -hmm. of course, what we do. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're, we're happy to. We're just starting to put out some white papers. We're talking about holding some, um, you know, training type sessions of things to consider. Um, so, Kim, I'll definitely keep you uh, in the forefront of my mind as I see stuff come through our way. Again, Al, it's evolving. So that's why I stuck these in real quick and I haven't really fully discussed it with management because um, even okay. in terms no, it's fine. of we're that's still getting the word out. Yep. Uh, and Mr. I'm, Chairman, I'm glad that we're on the, we're, we're up front on it. I'd like very much to stay up front and in front on it. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. At the at the risk of over answering that question, um, you know, DASNY internally for our own operations has uh, environmental uh, goals that we meet with our building, our fleet, and other matters, and keep up to date on the latest trends, following the governor's direction on you know, getting to net zero. We also have in our construction group, someone who heads that for us that helps us work with our clients on their ESG goals, making sure that our construction execution 
uh, matches those. And we have one net zero dorm we did for SUNY Poly, which is a um, flagship for us on that topic. And then Portia Lee and her group uh, is evaluating the green bond slash ESG bond uh, movement and making sure that we as a conduit issuer have the best information to help our clients as they look to issue green bonds. So this is high on our list of initiatives at DASNY and we have uh, both professionals and commitment from management uh, to continue that program. So we'll share that with the board at some point. We'll make a presentation for you if that's of interest and sort of work with KPMG on the best in class around ESG. And, and the white papers, uh, Mr. President, that, that Marie is talking about, are, that, that's work I'd actually like to see. It's external. It may be AICPA driven. It may not be. It may be KPMG driven. But if there are going to be white papers that they would supply to you all, I would ask that you consider, and your decision, of course, uh, uh, sharing that material with, with the board as well as an occasional presentation if you choose to do it on what our internal ESG uh, goals are, metrics are, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, we're happy to do this. Okay, cool. Thank you. Marie, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Marie. And Marie's on her vacation, so double thank you. Well, you uh, well everyone. I'm happy. <laughs> are, are you actually off vacationing now, Ms. Zimmerman? Are you doing that now? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, good for you. Well, good for you. Because we forgive us, forgive us for interrupting. A break. So no, no. I want a day early uh, to because we're we've got through the audit in such a smooth fashion. So thank you to management to allow me to go on vacation with my family this week, and <laughs> happy to present the good news. <laughs> well, it's great. It's it's great news, Mr. Chairman. May I may I make a comment? Uh, it, it, this has been a very very difficult year. You probably have similar comments, Mr. Chairman. Um, a very difficult year, uh, particularly with respect to internal controls. Uh, you may have a planned presentation on that, but I want to say congratulations to Kimberly Ellis um, for a making the transition to the to the Ellis era, uh, and at the same time maintaining the extraordinarily high standards that were set previously, and in even raising those standards so that we have unmodified opinions. Uh, and I, there are several of them. Uh, Kimberly, you are to be congratulated for having managed to a, an extraordinary year, a year I, I hope never to see again. Well, uh, I don't mean I want to die. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I just don't want to see a year like this one. Yep. Uh, Thank you. Uh, with, with some luck, uh, you, you, we, we benefit uh, from your attention to detail, Kimberly. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Um, uh, Kim, do you want to talk about the MDNA now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Marie and Jeff, for your presentation. Uh, turning back to the financial statements included in the audit committee tab of your materials, I'd like to review some of the more significant items that were included in this year's financial statements and provide you with highlights of DASI's financial results for the year. Beginning with the executive summary on page five, Highlights of our lines of business included another record-breaking year of our debt issuance activities, issuing $10.6 billion in debt. Most of this was related to the issuance of short-term notes on behalf of the state in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. On the construction management side, despite the delays in projects as a result of the pandemic, we were still able to assist in the efforts to convert South Beach Psychiatric Center to a Northwell Hospital outpost for COVID-19 patients. We completed cold permitting work on the Moynihan Station project and the train hall opened into December. Additionally, we completed construction of the new 257 bed net zero carbon certified residence hall at SUNY Poly's Utica campus. And lastly, we began construction on a new academic building on the campus of FIT and a new school of nursing building at Lehman College. As Jeff mentioned, from an accounting standpoint, we adopted GASB statement number 88 certain disclosures related to debt, including direct borrowings and direct placements. This required additional disclosure within the notes to the financial statements, including unused lines of credits, assets pledged as collateral for debt, and terms specified in debt agreements related to significant events of default with financial consequences, significant termination events with financial consequences, and significant acceleration clauses. 
It also required that debt information related to direct placements and direct borrowings be reported separately from other debt in the footnotes. This new GASB had no impact on the financial statements as the new rules related solely to additional disclosure. Turning to our financial results, overall, the financial statements reflect a decrease in our net financial position of 86 million, the majority of which is activity in our restricted funds. DASI's operations show the loss of 3.3 million. This loss reflects a surplus of 1.9 million on the private institution side, primarily due to a $1.7 million reduction to the allocation of OPEP expense and a 1.1 million surplus for financing and bond administration. This was offset by a $5.3 million deficit on the public side, which drove the overall deficit for the year. This deficit is due in large part to management's decision not to allocate a $4.8 million increase to our overhead rates as a result of the pandemic. Had we allocated that expense back out to our clients, we would have ended the year with a $1.5 million surplus from DASNY operations. In terms of debt issuance, as shown on pages eight and nine, we had over 10.6 billion of issuance for the year. Nearly 95% of that came from new money and refundings with nearly three quarters coming from new money issued to our public clients. In terms of distribution as shown in the charge, nearly all issuance, 93% was on behalf of our public clients. This was due in large part to the transactions undertaken to support the state's financial needs in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. On pages 11 through 13, you'll see we had 9.9 .9 billion in bond retirements for the year. Approximately 75% came from scheduled redemptions and 21% from bonds that were refunded by new DASNY bonds. The allocation by type saw an increase to 84% for public clients, up from 62% in the prior year. This was driven by the issuance of short-term notes on behalf of the state in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Moving to pages 13 to 15, we ended the year with nearly 59 billion in outstanding bonds, a moderate increase of 761 million from 2020 due to new money issuances being offset by a higher level of scheduled redemptions as a result of activity related to, to the state's short-term note issuances and limited activity on the private client side, which saw a net reduction in outstanding bonds. The split between public and private bonds remained relatively stable at 72% and 28% respectively. In terms of our construction management line of business on pages 16 through 18, our total construction and loan disbursements increased approximately 2.5 billion in 2021. Certified disbursements drove the increase with 2.7 billion more in disbursement requests primarily all from public clients and related to the state's short-term note transaction. Private clients' proportionate share of total construction expenditures decreased to 9% in 2021 from 22% in 2020. Turning to page 20, DASNY's statement in that position decreased 86 million in 2021, primarily due to reduced interest income as a result of significantly lower interest rates an increase in net pension liability, largely driven by interest rates, and the use of prior year surpluses to cover operating costs. Increases of approximately 1.2 billion in our assets and 1.3 billion in our liabilities were largely driven by net increase in bonds outstanding and the related increases in amounts held waiting reimbursement to the state, in addition to an increased unearned financing income in connection with the prepayment of debt service. On page 21, you can see the total investment balance of 4.8 billion reflects an increase of approximately 700 million, primarily due to new money bond issuance activity and amounts invested for payment of debt service on April 1, which typically would have matured on March 31st and held in cash awaiting payment. I'd also like to draw attention to the caption at the bottom of the chart, which shows we also held 3.7 billion in money market funds up from 957 million the prior year. This was largely due to the pit financing that closed at the end of the fiscal year, as well as monies received for prepayment of debt service at the close of the fiscal year. Highlighting the fact that DASN's investment portfolio has actually grown to over 8.5 billion as a result of the aforementioned transactions that occurred at the end of the year. 
Also included within your materials, we have the supplementary information that is provided with the financials. Those include the schedules that break out our financial statements between public and private clients and DASNY's operations, DASNY's budget and actual expenses for its operations, and a schedule of outstanding bonds and notes. We are required to submit the orders report and basic financial statements to the Office of the State Comptroller by June 30th. During tomorrow's board meeting, there will be a resolution to the board to approve adoption of the basic financial statements as of and for the year ended March 31, 2021. Are there any questions on the financial statements? I, I have a quick question for you. Um, in your report where you talked about overhead that we elected not to uh, uh, allocate to clients, can, can you just tell us a little more about what that was? And it was, we estimated our overhead rate that we bill clients um, that they make deposits to us um, mm -hmm. ahead of time based on actual charges, labor charges. As a result of the pandemic and staff being home more frequently, our overhead rate was at a higher rate than what we estimated. And we chose not, we typically would rebuild them or book yeah. a receivable to then send them another bill to actually repay for what we underestimated. And we chose not to actually send that rebill out to clients. Okay. Was that uh, um, a sort of a decision that to do that was adding uh, insult to the injury of the pandemic? Oh, pandemic, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, that sounds like a very good decision. Yes, thank you. And John, we do that in consultation with our best clients. They're, yeah. They're, they're, they're aware. Yeah, good. Good. Terrific. Kimberly, thank you. Thank you. Um, if there are no further questions, I'd like to call for a motion to recommend to the board uh, the approval of the dormitory authority's basic financial statements. It's Joan. I'd like to recommend that. Thank you, Joan. I'll second it, John. Thank you, Jerry. Um, all but do we well. do we have to do that by rank voting or just regular? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I shouldn't have laughed at that. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, John. It's okay, yeah, don't throw me off my game, Jerry. I'm not as fast as you are. Um, uh, uh, is there anyone opposed to uh, approval of the motion? Uh, hearing none, uh, the motion carries uh, unanimously. Uh, and then I would like to turn it back over to Kim uh, for the annual investment report. Thank you, John. The next report is the annual investment report, which DASI is also required to file with the Office of State Comptroller. The report includes our investment policy and guidelines and summaries of investment income earned and fees paid for the year. A copy of our financial statements will also be filed with the report. There was one change in our guidelines during the year. At March 31st meeting, the board approved an amendment to section nine to allow for permitted investments to be purchased, sold, or presented for redemption by secure electronic means. Investment income totaled 5.8 million for the year, 2.3 million of which was earned from construction funds with the remaining three and a half million from all other funds. During 2021, DASNY paid approximately 776,000 for trustee and custodial services. Are there any questions on the investment report? Hearing none, uh, could I, are we done with the investment we're, report? We're done with the investment report before you, but before you move on, I do, I would like to just take a moment to just kind of thank staff. Um, on the receipt, receipt of these results. As you're aware, this year audit was done once again remotely. And we're, as we continue in a hybrid work environment with staff periodically in the office as needed, but for the most part conducted business from home. This year's audit was a different set of circumstances as a period under audit was for work primarily done working remotely. In contrast to last year's audit, although remotely was for a period of time while staff was still working 100% in the office pre-pandemic. Despite those many challenges, the team continued to maintain the accuracy of our financial records and provide outstanding support to KPMG, both, both of which were critical to achieving these results. This was accomplished all by losing people in senior roles and who had a long history with DASNY. 
in addition to allowing me to transition to my new role and undertake the audit from a different perspective. I've been able to rely heavily on their experience, knowledge, and dedication, and to maintain our books and records accurately to provide the necessary to support to our independent auditors to ensure that we continue to receive unmodified opinions and ensure that our financial statements are filed with the state in a timely manner. In particular, I would like to thank Lee Zhu, who's the manager of accounting, who led us through the audit for the first time on our home on her own due to the retirement of Karen Sider at the end of last year's audit. She had the support of Commerce Seas and Steve Winters Bona, the assistant directors in the debt unit, Stanley Reed, the assistant director of investments, Jeff Arnold, the director of budget and operations, Kelly Ray, the manager of accounts payable, Tanette Tomlin, the senior financial analyst of the debt unit and their respective teams. Without the dedication and over oversight of these teams, today's audit results would not be possible. I especially wanna thank them for making my transition into the CF role, CF role, CFO role seamless. I've been through many year in audits, but this one was certainly a different experience than all the others. And I just wanna say I'm truly grateful to have such highly skilled and professional staff at the helm to ensure we're guided in the right direction. I'd also like to thank Gia Wu from our inter internal audit team who supported KPMG during the audit process. And lastly, I'd like to thank KPMG for their support and role in making the audit run smoothly. I appreciated their calm and reassurance that we were still on track at every status meeting where the completion pie chart just didn't seem to be moving along quickly enough for me. But honestly, I truly appreciate their continued professionalism in conducting the audit. So thank you, Marie and Jeff and your team of professionals. And that concludes my remarks. John. Thank you. Do you mind if I add my two cents? Um, Please. For many years, I was the recipient of these uh, financial reports from many of the state agencies. DASNY was always the lead. Um, the importance of getting these reports on time re um, allows New York State to file the consolidated financial report, which is due out August 15th. And we are one of the few states in the country that files them on time, primarily because of the kind of work that DASNY does. So kudos, Kim, it's a, it's a huge effort and Thank it's you. really very important. Thank, Thank you. you. Here, here, on behalf of the audit committee. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. And, 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 and on everyone, behalf of the board. And everyone Thank listed you in your Kim. remarks. Sorry, Al, go. I said, and on behalf of the board, Kim, I, I started earlier. Um, this has been an incredible year for you. You've had to make so many different adjustments. Um, You've risen to every challenge you, you, to, that, that uh, you've had to, to which you've had to rise. And we are very, very grateful for your attention to the kind of detail that was required to make this all work out. I, I know your relationship with KPMG is a good one. It has been for a number of years. But the transition you've had to go through in the middle of a pandemic uh, could have gone in any direction. Uh, you made sure that it went in the direction DASNY required, and you did a fabulous job of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And with that, uh, I would like to call for a motion uh, to recommend to the board the approval of the investment report. It's Joan, so moved. Thank you, Joan. Jerry, thank you. Uh, is anyone opposed to uh, uh, ratifying this motion? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, and now I would like to turn it over to Ruben for the Public Authorities Accountability Act annual report. Thank you, Chairman Gardner. I appreciate that. As you know, each year uh, we have a responsibility to file a report to the Public Authorities Accountability uh, Group. And so it's our ABO report. You received a copy of that report. I do want to uh, just thank Jeff Gordon, the communications team. They spent some good time this year uh, trying to make that more accessible to the reader. It summarizes our operations, both in words and technically. I think it was very well done this year. And so with that, Mr. Chair, I will ask for your approval to submit that to uh, the Accountability Review Board. Thank you. Um, can I have a, uh, a motion to uh, approve that submission to the board tomorrow? Once again, Joan makes the motion. Thank you, Joan. And I'll second it again. Jerry. Thank you. Is anyone opposed? Hearing no one, uh, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, and that 
I think uh, covers the uh, formal uh, portion of this meeting, the things we have to take care of. Um, may I please have a motion to go into executive session to discuss the financial history of a particular corporation and matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation? You got it, John. Joan and Jerry, again, uh, um, let us go into executive session. Um, Mr. Chairman, before you, before you do that, I just want to, the rest of the staff, we'll come out of executive session. We will go just to adjourn the meeting. So there's no need for you staff members not in executive session to stay on the phone. Yes. And, and I want to thank uh, the, uh, the members of uh, KPMG who are with us. Uh, and um, Marie, you are free to uh, pursue your vacation. Go back um, to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both. Um, uh, can we keep in the executive session uh, Ruben, uh, Paul Koopman, Karen Ellinger, uh, Kathy, uh, Nadine, and the members of the audit committee? And everybody else, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see you on the, we'll see you, you in the tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. We'll pause the recording and then you will move in automatically. Let me turn. Here we go. The recording's back on. Okay. okay. Uh, we have just concluded an executive session. No action was taken in executive session other than to return to the public session. Uh, is there any new business to be considered? Hearing none, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I make the motion. And Thank I'll second that. And I'll Thank second that motion. Is Thank anyone you. opposed? Hearing no, no one opposed, the motion carries, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, thank you very much, everybody.